Monday, wish upon a star, wake up where the clouds are far behind. It's breakfast with Bob, oh yeah. Pacho man, now, this is Friday edition Breakfast with Bob, our last interview of the week. EAS Sports Nutrition, Hoka One One, Polar, Oscar Wellness, Velo Fix. Our championship edition will be at Four Seasons Hualalai on Sunday. We are airing on triathlonworld.com. Our next guest, Mr. BJ Christensen, who is racing on Saturday, but is a little hampered here. BJ, what the heck? You're a 903 guy here in Kona. What happened to you? Well, I have the worst nightmare most athletes think about. The day before I left, I decided to go out for a little bike test ride yeah. and ultimately crashed during that ride. And uh, because of it, I broke my scapula. So, so the uh, type of thing, you got run off the road by a car. No, just no. It's, air, it's basically pilot error. My mind was in Hawaii and my body was in Utah. And, <laughs> and your bike was on the side of the road. Exactly. I love that. So as you're laying there, Right, I'm sure you're thinking, uh, airfare is paid, room is paid. Uh, uh, this is your what, ninth time? What'd yeah, you? ninth time. Ninth time. So, was there ever a thought of I'm not going to be able to go? I think when it first happened, I was like, you know, after a few swear words came out, yeah. Uh, then, then I just kind of said, you know what, it's not going to be the race I hoped for, but we'll see what happens in ten days. Maybe I'll have a little less pain. We'll yes. Let's go and see what happens. So now that we're a day away, how's the pain? Uh, I say 1% a day better, so we're about 9% better than we were when it crashed. So I think enough to deal with it. Sometimes <laughs> when you, know, you change your perception, right? Yeah. You're, you're going to go out there, you're going to have a smile on your face, you can be hanging with volunteers yeah. because you, you know you're not winning anything, yeah. right? Absolutely. Your, your, your whole uh, your way you look at this race changes totally. For sure. No, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's a different experience. Uh, I do want to take my time. Yes. Thank volunteers. Uh, eat a little more food at the aid stations. A little buffet. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, try to maybe see how much I can down. Uh, it's just a different experience. We don't have expectations other than just to get to the finish line, the load off. You know, I just, just want to finish. So give me a little background. When, when did you get into this sport? Because you, you look more power forward than traveling. <laughs> yeah. A lot Six, of seven. Exactly. So I was actually a long distance runner for the University of Utah. And back then I was six, seven and 170 pounds, but I was That's still big for, big yeah, it's for a, big. a distance You runner. were a great wind block running around <laughs> yeah. the track. I bet guys it, loved running behind you. You know it. Um, but I was a steeplechase expert, so oh, that was my event. So, my favorite event. Yeah, so that was my strength. So I loved jumping over things. I was distracted on the track. So triathlon kind of fell into a nice niche when I finished up my eligibility and it was uh, wearing my hat for my hometown race, yeah. Spud Man Try. And uh, that got me involved in the sport. And from then I just fell in love. This is a lot of fun. I don't have to run every day. I can swim, I can bike. It's a lot of fun training. So let's talk steeple. Since uh, <laughs> right, we got let's, let's Melissa Halshoot is a steeple chaser, yeah. silver at the Commonwealth Games. Yeah. Um, Jesse, Thomas, Jeff, the Jesse Thomas is steeple. Jeff Simon's not racing, but <laughs> one of the top triathletes is a steeple guy. That is the toughest event and the coolest event because for us spectators, we stay by the pit and just watch the carnage, right? Exactly. We watch you guys jump over, hopefully biff into the pit, have everybody with spikes on jumping on you, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the worst thing you've seen in the pit? Uh, well, I inflicted one time, I literally landed on a guy's Achilles tendon in the pit. Wow. And I felt like a dick. Uh, it was the worst. I love that. You landed on he, he, his Achilles. He, he had a terrible entry. I mean, he, he blew the entry, landed in about two feet of water. He was trudging his way out. I come flying over the top, and my foot went right into his Achilles. And I'm like, sorry, dude. Sorry, dude. <laughs> nice knowing you. Keep going. Next time, don't biff. Yeah. yeah. If you yeah. don't want to get stepped on, yeah. don't biff. Now, did you ever biff in there? Uh, you could jump right over to pit. Yeah. I... I've had a few close calls. Never, yeah. never ate it, but I've slipped off a few. Watched a guy's knee go right into a barrier. Oh. He dropped to the ground. That was a fun day. People forget sometimes that those barriers don't, they move. don't move. They're not like they're real not hurdles. hurdles. <laughs> no, they're not hurdles. <laughs> when usually when somebody says to you, "Let's have you run the steeple," it's because they're like, "He's good. He's tough. 
but we really can't find almost like yeah. the kid in right field, right? Yeah. So when they first approached you and said, did you run it in high school too? I ran actually a little special event in high school, the 2,000 meter steeplechase a couple of times. Okay. Some invitationals. I fell in love with the event from the first you time. You liked it. I loved it. Yeah. And what makes it so tough? It's the jumping. You yeah. know, we, we joke for, in the steeplechase that everybody can run four laps. You know, four laps of jumping around, around the hurdles. But you watch the steeplechase. Everybody's together for four laps. And then in the last two and a half laps, three laps, somebody can get lapped in that amount of time. That's how bad it separates. So you just, you just rigor mortis sets in. People just can't get over them. They're stepping over them. <laughs> it's, you, like you said, it's a fun event to watch. But when you're in it, you've never felt like you couldn't clear three feet in your life. What's funny is Tom Hunt was a, a, a 10K national record holder for the U.S. and a steeplechase yeah. guy. And I asked him once about the steeple. He said, the thing about the steeple, in most races you do, you sort of lose it a little bit. You sort of fade. <laughs> and with steeple, one minute you're feeling like you're winning a gold medal. Next minute there's a piano right in the middle <laughs> of your back, and you are done. Yeah. There's no, like, fading. It's no. you're full on and full gone. Exactly. Yeah, you're, you're out the back and uh, just hoping to get across the next barrier. <laughs> so you're looking for another way to brutalize yourself yep. after steeplechase because that wasn't quite tough enough. <laughs> and then you're like, well, Iron Man, I can hurt this. Why do a nine minute event when I can do a nine hour event? I love that mentality. What, what got you in the triathlon? Uh, believe it or not, so uh, my cousin was a good swimmer. So in my hometown, I'm from a really small town in Idaho, Spudman Triathlon in Burley, Idaho. I've but actually, heard of Spudman, you, yeah. It's been going on for 30 years. It's the largest triathlon in the in probably the western, US, at least in our mountain region. Yes. But it's okay. not sanctioned by USAT, but it's a downriver swim. Ooh, that's good. You swim good. down the Snake River. So anyone who can't swim, they love doing the Spudman. Yes. So I grew up volunteering and watching this race and like, this, this, this looks like a lot of fun. But then when you get to college, you know, your coaches are kind of oh, there. No. They're not, you can't not, do you other can't stuff. You can't do yeah. other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So it was just kind of like in waiting, always in waiting. So as soon as I was done, I was ready to hit it full throttle. So your goal going in here before this is you wanted an Umeke. You, you know wanted it. the, uh, the <laughs> trophy for being on the stage. You got it. Yeah. Because you've been, you've been close. Close. In the, you've been in the zip code of an Umeke? Yes, yes. And in the very close zip code of an Umeke. And, uh, what have you been? Have you been like six? Six. <laughs> oh, that's no, six. No, maybe eighth. But yeah, I've I've been in the top ten, and yeah, it's always. Uh, you could almost touch wood. Exactly. Right. You almost exactly. had. You almost <laughs> had the had the umeke, but yeah. not quite. Exactly. And it, it was that the type of thing where you're in fifth place, coming towards the end of the run, and some no, guy goes. No, I'm usually gaining on people in the run, but okay, not. I, not I've come spots. off the bike in 400th place here. Have you really? <laughs> yeah. So. This isn't really going to hurt your swimming cycle anyway. Oh, no. I'll be like, this is a bonus. Yeah. I don't have to use that yeah. dumb arm. That just yeah. gets in the way anyway. Yeah. But I did the underpants run. Yeah. Hardest mile and a half of my life yesterday. Really a lot of pain. <laughs> it was terrible. Now, and this isn't the first time. You're six seven. Yeah. So when you go boom, the, you break bones yeah. that people don't usually break. Yeah. The bone that you broke, your scapula. Yeah. Usually, you break that when they see that in autopsies. Exactly. But they don't see that. Usually, you don't go no. in. A, a person it's, who is actually still breathing usually yeah. doesn't break that. <laughs> exactly. The, the x-ray texts are always like, uh, you're my first broken scapula, and I don't think I'll ever see another one. Why? Because usually, it's a, a lot of force. It takes a lot to break it because it's a moving bone. It doesn't sit on anything. It's just right. strapped to a bunch of muscle. And uh, usually it's when you get hit really, really hard. So along with a broken scapula, you have a broken pair of lungs. Uh, you've got Neck. ribs stepping yeah. into things, severed spinal cord. So, yeah, you usually die from it. But if you hit it just right, which I've done three times, it'll say, break. Three <laughs> times you've broken the same thing. That's unbelievable. Yeah. The it's like trick. my kryptonite. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> so, so the plan is you're going to swim. But, I mean, the one thing the to even try to use this thing but you've got 2300 people who oh, are yeah. basically I'm, I'm terrified you, of them yeah who are they're like be, sharks they're going to be hitting you on that so what are you going to do to protect that well uh i thought about hiring bodyguards yeah that'd be good <laughs> but i'm just going to probably strap it to my body and swim away away from everybody stay way to the side exactly just yeah. try not to get kicked we talking saran wrap yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That'd be good for photos. I would yeah, go with that. I'm just hoping they won't disqualify me. They might find that it gives me an extra pointed uh, uh, hydrodynamics. They'll find that I'm swimming too fast with saran wrap around me. You know, that's one of those 
I think you'd be you have the first saran wrap penalty. I think I, I don't think there'll be a problem with that. Feel free to put me in the penalty box for are four minutes. Gonna, are you going to be able to get into arrow? What are you going to do? Yeah, on that? I can get into arrow as long as I'm just you know I put most of my weight on my right arm. Yes, and you know I'll just be cautious. So just lay the exactly, left one down. Lay the so left you won't arm. wear a sling for that. No, it's more comfortable. Well, that way I've tried okay. riding with the sling and it, it just hurts yeah. holding it up that long. So I'll just wear the sling on the run. But you will definitely, now have you run with the sling already? Oh, yeah, underpants. the underpants run. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. did 50 feet in it. Yeah. You're good. No, yeah. No, we're good to go. It's only a marathon. Exactly. Was there a point when you're laying on the ground or even the next day where you had a little pity party and thought, you know, why me? Uh, yeah, I think everybody has to have that moment, you know, especially when you've prepared for so long. I qualified in Tahoe, so over a year ago. I've never had that long of a preparation period. Yeah. And I was really starting to feel good. Like my fin was com coming along. I, I really had a good feeling about the race. Mm -hmm. And yeah, when, you, when it just kind of gets taken away from you, realize I'm hurt and I'm hurt so bad that that's not going to happen. I think you, you're allowed to have a little bit of a grief period. But then at the same time, it's like you still have two good arms. You have one good arm. You're not dead. Yeah. You know, yeah. people have a lot worse in this world. Right. You know, get over it. You're still going to Hawaii tomorrow, even if you don't race. So and let's just try to make uh, some lemonade out of this. What's the what's your fastest marathon on an Ironman course? I've gone 256 wow. in Lake Placid, 255 in Coeur d'Alene. So you uh, are a runner. I got a few wheels in here. Yes, it's you been do. a while. Yeah. <laughs> and when you do, when you go to the, when you get halfway through this bike ride and then realize that, okay, my... My wall. This is not what I'm used yeah. to. You've already programmed I'm, yourself yeah, to go. Yeah, you just have forget to not go, exactly. You just kind of have to say this is, this is just let's just enjoy the day, enjoy the experience, yes. and take each mile for what it's worth. You know, I'm going to go aid station to aid station because I don't think I can stop and drink. Oh, like, good I, point. I don't think I yeah. can reach down and grab something. I'm I'm terrified of the crosswinds. I honestly am. Well, I'll tell you, we have <laughs> one of our athletes from Challenge Athletes Foundation, <laughs> One Arm Willie Stewart. This is before he had a prosthetic arm uh -huh. to use would do this race and he had a reservoir under his seat was about a gallon of water <laughs> he rode to the turnaround refilled it and, and rode back because you can't take your one arm off yeah. and grab stuff when this arm can't do anything yeah yeah no it's it's and polani i am scared to death of polani oh, right climbing. now climbing no coming down it oh coming that down first mile yes. after we do the little loop making yeah. that turn uh I'm Can just, your hand grasp the brakes a little uh, very, bit? Very much, very lightly, but it's so steep, I'm afraid, I don't know. We'll just see. I might have to walk down Polani. <laughs> when you're going to get to Elite Drive, and I'm coming down there. Elite Drive, obviously, you know, you, maybe you'll be wearing, maybe you might have a glow stick, <laughs> maybe you'll be drinking a little chicken soup, things you've never experienced <laughs> yeah. before, right? Yeah. What do you think it's going to feel like for you? Because this, this is a different journey. This is a, a journey you didn't choose. Yeah. I mean, you chose to come yeah. here, but you didn't choose to be compromised I, I i just think it's yeah it's just a different experience and i hope you know i'm probably going to have those mixed emotions i'm sure there's gonna be times i'm gonna feel down i'm gonna feel like i wish i was racing my best right um but at the same time i'm happy to be here i'm happy to to test myself and just see what i can do even when even when shit happens you know right shit happens to everybody like one of the things i've i learned as a young child life is not fair that bad things happen to people that are great people but it's just how you handle it. how's your attitude just and I, and I hope that my experience is a positive one tomorrow. So if you weren't 6'7", and you're falling from pretty high, <laughs> it, I, I'm guessing that has something to do with why you've broken the scapula yeah. three times. It's got to be. I think just I carry a lot of mass, and when you fall from that high, it's like I think the Richter scale moves a little so bit. So you're six. <laughs> are you 6'7"? What, what do you weigh now? Uh, 195. That's still a skinny guy. Yeah, six, I'm a skinny seven, guy. 195. Had you ever been enticed to play basketball back in the day? I'm sure well, the coaches were drooling. Yeah, they, they wanted me to play, but you got to remember, I, I was a rail. When I graduated high school, I was 6'6", six, six, 165 pounds. I wow. mean, my singlet would fall off my shoulder. I mean, a wind would pick me up and carry me around. It, it, <laughs> I wasn't that attractive on the basketball floor. So, And I grew up in a very small town in Idaho. Um, there weren't a lot of uh, college scouts coming through for ball players. <laughs> let me let me tell you. But the beauty about running is, you run a fast time. Everybody knows. Exactly. Easy to recruit. Yep. Like, oh, what do you run? Okay, we can go talk to this it's kid. It's finite. Yeah. We know we can take a look at that. His mile split, and that's uh -huh. that's all that matters. Yeah. BJ, thanks so much for hey, taking the time. Really, really an honor to have you on. <laughs> And have have a great time tomorrow, man. Oh, I hope to. It's a catered workout. It is. Right? It it's is. Just a I'm going to get my money's day. worth. <laughs> get your, see? Usually when you go 903, you don't get your money's worth. If you do like 12 hours or something, 
you got a lot more value for your exactly. money. Poncho Man, take us out. Someday, wish upon a star, wake up with clouds up on the eye. Breakfast with Bob, oh yeah, all over Friday. That is a wrap from Huggos. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Yeah, buddy.